Hey guys, it's Chris with Call to Wander. Standing right outside our brand new used Class C motorhome. And today I want to talk to you about the criteria that we use when we decided to purchase this particular motorhome. There's a lot of things you want to look for when you're purchasing a used RV, and that's what we're going to go through today to make sure you know what you're up against as you're trying to find the perfect fit for your new RV life. This is a 21 year old RV, so it has seen a lot of things in its time and uh, we need to make sure that we see what it's seen and how it's um, how it's set up and what's been done to it and what has not been done to it and uh, let's get started on that right now and when looking at a used RV there's really two things that we say are the most important the first is does it start does it run well is it mechanically sound so you're gonna want to start the RV and listen for funny sounds if you know your engines, you can check and make sure that everything looks good, sounds good. But if you're like us, just getting it to start is the first step. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to look for is water damage. Those are our two non-negotiables when we're looking at a used RV. Is it mechanically sound and is there any water damage? Water damage is not fun to deal with, so unless you're looking for a DIY fixer-upper where you're gonna learn how to fix water damage, you probably wanna make sure that there is no water damage or minimal water damage or at least understand what's been done to fix the water damage. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fire this up and make sure that it works and runs and sounds great and then we'll check for water damage. So firing it up should be pretty simple. Put the key in there. I've noticed that we have 47,845 miles on this particular RV. Again, this one's 21 years old so you do the math on that. That's uh, right around two and a half thousand miles per year, 2,500 miles per year. That's not a lot. And so um, that was a criteria for us in looking was we wanted something with low mileage, but there's also questions. Why does it have such a low mileage? And we'll get into that shortly. But here we go, firing it up. It did not blow up. That's fantastic. The gauges look to be pretty good when we were when we were looking at this the first time uh, we had the previous owner tell us well the speedometer doesn't really work and so it's stuck at 50 right now that's not a deal breaker in our case maybe it would be a deal breaker in your case but it's not we've been up against far worse with our previous used RV let's go around and take a look at the engine make sure nothing's loose make sure nothing's squeaking Everything appears to be mechanically sound, um, but of course you're going to want to do some more inspecting of the outside of the vehicle and make sure before you drive it off that it is um, in fact safe first and that it is running functionally. So you're going to want to have a test drive and if the owner does not allow you to take a test drive, you want to just say thanks but no thanks, get in your car and drive away. Anybody who's selling a used RV should give you the opportunity to hop in, go for a drive. In fact, in our case, we had the owner drive it for a couple miles just to see how he drove and kind of observed, well, are they treating it nice? How are they handling curves? Are there anything, is there any weird noises? Are there anything they're trying to cover up when they're driving because they're not thinking about it? And then we pulled over and I hopped behind the wheel and we were able to then take it for another couple miles and just get the feeling of how sound the engine was and how sound the vehicle was. Before you drive anywhere, whether it's a test drive or when you purchase it, check the tires. Your whole life is gonna be riding on these tires, so make sure they're in good shape. So one thing we noticed when we bought ours was the tread was fantastic. And we're like, this is great. And then we test drove it and everything seemed fine. We actually purchased the vehicle and, and, and had to drive about 150 miles. After that, all of a sudden it started driving wonky. And so we took it into Discount Tire, our favorite tire shop, and they're like, oh yeah, so these tires look fantastic if it was the year 2013. So we found out that our tires were seven years old, the balance was way off, they were not safe to drive, and we had already driven 150 miles on them. So you wanna make sure to check the tire. Obviously these are brand new tires, uh, three miles on them right now, but you wanna check your tread depth and then there's also a way to check the date, which we didn't know. 
But this number right here is going to tell you the week of the year, the 39th week of the year of the year 2020. So these tires, we're in December now. These tires were October, November. So they're new tires. We know that now. The tread's great. They're safe. We obviously, we had them professionally mounted. So we know that. But when you're looking for the tires on the RV, make sure you do check the date because we found out this RV was stored for seven years, which is good and it's bad. And of course, before you drive, you want to make sure that you check all the fluids. So in our case, we check the engine coolant, the brake fluid, power steering fluid. That's good. That's good. This is the oil dipstick. Ours goes on for three miles. <laughs> Yours probably will too. Oh, look at that. That looks like fresh oil. Beautiful. I changed the oil on this because when we had checked it, it had not been changed in seven years. And so that leads us to a very important point. Try to get the mechanical history and the repair history for the vehicle. The previous owner should keep up with that. Not everybody's as organized and responsible, but you should have a general idea of how it's been maintained, if there's any work done on the brakes, if there was any work done on the engine itself, if the battery was swapped out like this one was recently. Try to find out any paperwork and any oral history from the previous owner. You also wanna know how many owners previously owned it. In our case, we think it was three, not counting the one that we purchased it from who just had it for a couple weeks. Um, but try to get a, the history of the vehicle from a mechanical standpoint. You can request the VIN number and you can actually pay and you could do the, um, the background check on the vehicle if you wanted to pay a little bit of money and go ahead and do that. And that would tell you any major work that was done. Um, and again, if the owner that, that is selling it doesn't offer the VIN number so that you can do that in advance, you probably don't want to deal with them uh, from that point forward. So everything here is mechanically sound for us from the standpoint of feeling comfortable and safe driving. Of course, you want to crawl up underneath the RV as well, or at least tip your head up underneath, check for major rust or check for anything that looks out of place. Most likely, especially on a low mileage RV, everything's going to be intact. But you do want to check and make sure there's nothing dragging, that there's no uh, wires or hoses that seem to be uh, out of place. And you definitely want to make sure that there's not an abundance of rust. If you know what you're getting into with these mechanical issues, that's one thing. But you definitely don't want to be surprised like we were with the tires when you get back and you, you have to put money into it that you weren't expecting to. So if you do find any major issues, if anything is off, obviously that's gonna be a negotiating point for you when, with the seller. One last thing with the mechanical inspection of the vehicle, you should be able to, uh, with the seller, you should be able to have somebody come out a professional and do an inspection if you're not comfortable testing everything out yourself. If they're not comfortable with that, again, you're gonna be looking for another RV because the seller should want to be honest and upright with you and sell the vehicle as is in the condition that it is. And so that's something that you're also welcome to do is to hire. And that's usually going to be a couple hundred dollars. So you want to make sure that you've done your own inspection and you feel comfortable with the vehicle before you shell out that kind of money, but definitely make sure that you feel the vehicle is mechanically sound and safe to operate. Now that we know that the RV is mechanically sound and we feel safe driving it, we want to make sure and check, for any signs of delamination or water damage on the outside before we go inside and before we climb up on the roof. So as we look, this should be a flat surface, which it is. There's no ripples. You visually cannot see the ripples. You cannot feel them. And so you want to just kind of walk around and check, particularly along seams. Now visually, we notice that there is an indentation here. So at some point, I don't know, it looks like uh, somebody must have backed into here or maybe they took a corner a little too close. This is where the propane is. And so we inspect it when you see an issue with the outside. You definitely want to inspect and make sure there's nothing damaged. And 
it was just the frame. We can live with that. So as you continue to walk around, you want to look for anything that's out of the normal. You also want to check the seals on all the outside bends. And like, it seems small, but you can tell there's no sealing around here. So that's something that definitely needs to have attention. But as you press around, there's no sign of water damage. If I were to press along here and you hear a crack or indentation, it's soft, then you would definitely have an issue with water getting in here. So you can just, again, go around, be thorough. You're spending money on this, so you want to make sure you know exactly what you're getting into. And if you do find a spot or two that you're comfortable with being damaged, that's up to you. But again, you want to know what you're getting into. So as we check all along here, we can see we're going to be resealing all of our outside seams because there is no water damage in our RV, which was a huge reason, probably the number one reason why we purchased this particular RV is there was no water damage. Now that we're inside, we're going to inspect for water damage. The outside we saw looked fantastic, but we definitely want to check the inside just to make sure if there was damage previously and it was covered up in some way, you'll notice it inside. The first thing you're going to notice is, what does it smell like in here? And you know the distinctive smell of mold and mildew. So if you smell that right off the bat, you know you're probably up against a water leak somewhere. Does not mean that there is a water leak. It could just be you're in a humid place like Florida where we are, and there's just a natural um, moisture in the air. But definitely you want to start checking for places where mold and mildew might collect. And so you're going to want to open up every cabinet that you can. Press along the walls. There's no give on any of these walls. There's no visual signs of leak. The place where you're most likely to have water damage is going to be the front of the RV, uh, where the cab over is. And that's pretty standard. Whether you have a window across, which we didn't want to get an RV that had the window across the front because that assures you that there's going to be leak at some point. But there's also lights that are mounted on the outside and those tend to leak as well. And then of course the fact that this is taking the brunt of all of your traveling. Uh, the previous RV we had had hit a tree and there was a dent in the corner. So there's all kinds of, uh, of damage that can happen to these RVs in the front. So we're gonna do the same thing. Be, whoa, look at that. It opened down. <laughs> that surprised me. So you wanna come in Make sure you shine a light so I can tell you visually this looks fantastic. It could not look any better. And then I press, there's no real give. There's no musky odor. Same thing down here. Everything looks fantastic. And we're gonna check everywhere. Here's the deal, when you're inspecting this RV before you buy it, when you're inspecting the used RV, you should take as long as you feel comfortable to inspect it. We literally will walk you through, we won't take you through the two hours that we spend, but every time we look at a used RV, we're spending about an hour and a half or two hours going through everything. We're opening up literally every cabinet, we're feeling all the surfaces, we're smelling the surfaces, we're pulling out all the drawers, we're looking behind the drawers, we'll get into all those other things, but take your time and make sure that you feel comfortable with the inspection that you're doing. If the owner's trying to rush you off, they may be trying to hide something. So we've gone through all of these. We'll take you through all the cabinets. Everything in our opinion checked out. Perfect. You also want to check the roof. Run your hands literally every place across the roof. There's no give. anywhere on this roof. Definitely check around the fans and any other appliance. Because this goes out to the roof, there's a hole in the roof where this appliance is. If it's not sealed correctly on top, which you would most likely see, but if it's not sealed, you might have water damage 
you would see a stain, it might feel soft, but in our case, there's no damage, which was again, why we love this RV. We're also going to open up all the cabinets. Or we're going to try to open up all of the cabinets. <laughs> this is on our to-do list. <laughs> and we're going to visually inspect there is some dirt, and that's about it. There's no signs of any water damage here, back here. And so you're going to want to carry on this process throughout the entire RV. Check the roofs, check the ceiling, pull out every single cabinet, look behind it, see if the floor is peeling up in areas. You also want to check the floor and walk every inch. If there's any wood rot on the floor, you're going to feel it. You're going to hear it. And again, this RV, we've done this through every square inch of this RV. We took our time and there's no water damage. So for us, we've met criteria number one, this is mechanically sound, and we also met criteria number two, there's no water damage. So now we're gonna talk about some of the other things to make sure that you check when you're looking to purchase a used RV. So now you're gonna to wanna to check the appliances and make sure that everything works. And if it doesn't work, you wanna know in advance that it does not work. For us, we were told up front that their refrigerator did not work and we were told that they weren't certain about the water heater, the hot water heater. And so for us, knowing that was important. We were also told there was a leak in the sink, and so that um, left us not able to test some other things. But you want to be able to test all of your appliances. What appliances do you have to test? We've got your refrigerator and freezer. So you want to make sure that it turns on both electric that it runs on propane. So for us, we would hit this switch. The propane is turned off right now, but you'd want to make sure that it turns on. So you'd hear it click over and then poof, it'll fire up. You've also got kitchen appliances that you're going to want to check. So you've got your stove and your oven. Make sure you know how to operate. So this is gonna open up the gas. And in our case, you have to manually light each one. And same thing with the oven, there's a pilot burner. So you have to light it manually. You're also likely to have a furnace or a heater. And so in our case, it's located beneath our sofa. And we have a thermostat that we can turn it on and we want to make sure that it works. I recommend that you have the previous owner turn everything on so that you can see how they do it and see what they do. If there's any little tips and tricks that they tell you or if there's things that they try to cover up because something's broken and doesn't work the way it should, you want to know that. Make sure that the seller tells you and shows you how to turn everything on. You want to make sure your fans work Every RV is going to have a fan. If it doesn't, you're going to want to put one in yourself. Different speeds, it works fine. It actually has in and out. So it looks like it's in the thing. So that is fantastic, literally. close that down. Our RV, this one has three fans, so you want to check all the fans. You may also have air condition, which we have. Air condition will only work when we have our generator on or when we're plugged into shore power, 30 amp shore power. And so that's one thing we're going to want to check because we do have a generator which starts and stops with the press of a button. 
So we'll do that in just a moment and show you that the generator works because if you have an onboard generator, for us, again, that was a, a deal breaker. We wanted to make sure that we had a generator that worked or that required minimal service, such as an oil change and filter change. So we have a generator that works and we'll fire that up for you and show you. So now we're gonna check the furnace. The gas is on. We have a thermostat. Now we're going to check the air condition and the generator at the same time. So I'm going to start the generator. It should start. You shouldn't have to do anything crazy with a generator like this. Let's fire it up. So now we can go back to the thermostat and we can turn the air condition on, which will crank this up. And we have our air conditioning vents on the ceiling, which are fantastic because the cool air sinks. The air condition is running. You can feel the cool air coming out. Because the generator is running, that makes me feel good. I can now run the microwave if we'd like to. All of our lights are going to be powered through the generator, charging the batteries, so we know power-wise we're good. Turn the generator off. We're back to battery power and propane power. So this will fire up. So now we've tested all the appliances, which is a very important step. So you know what works, what doesn't work, and also importantly, how it works. So if you're like us and you know that you're getting into something that doesn't work, like the refrigerator, you're going to want to be able to negotiate that out of the price with the seller because it's either going to take a new refrigerator, repair, or you're going to have to fix it yourself. Either way, you want to know what you're getting into with your appliances. So we've tested all the appliances. Then we're going to move on to the plumbing, which I cannot test because we know we have a water leak. Uh, we know that the, the sink has a leak. And we have not fixed that, but we knew going into that was something that we were up against. So our water pump is right here. I'm not going to turn it on because water will start gushing out all over everything. But you want to check all of your plumbing appliances to make sure that they work as well. Again, for us, we knew that we had a leak. We knew not to use the water until we fix it. So we're not so worried. That's something that we know that we can repair. But if that's beyond your comfort zone, walk away from the RV or back it out of the price knowing that you're going to have to pay somebody to fix it for you so what plumbing do you want to check you want to check your sinks we have bathroom sink as well you're going to want to check your shower and you're going to want to check your toilet And checking for your plumbing, you're going to want to make sure that you go outside and look in any crawl spaces where there's um, pipes or hoses. You want to make sure that there's no leak. You definitely want to check around your gray tank and your black tank and make sure that none of that is leaking into any of your storage spaces if you have them or leaking generally on the ground when you're using the appliance or anywhere else. Because water damage is not a fun thing to fix, whether it's coming from the roof down, as we've talked about, or whether it's coming from in your sink or your toilet or underneath the RV itself where the water is supposed to be moving into the tanks and then leaving the tanks when you empty them. You do not have to empty your tank when you're going to check out the used RV. You can take the previous owner's, the seller's word for it that hopefully it has been emptied. In our case, we had a pleasant surprise or an unpleasant surprise because we wanted to make sure the tanks were empty. So we went to a dump station and I pulled the valve and I closed my eyes hoping that nothing came out and then it was pretty much full. 
So we inherited a big pile of poop. You may too. You can talk to the seller about that. But you don't necessarily have to check that. That's pretty standard being able to dump the tanks um, without issue. Now that you've checked the appliances, you know that the vehicle is mechanically sound. You know that there's no water damage. You've checked for uh, all of the plumbing. You also want to check electrical. And that's relatively simple. Anything that has a button or a switch, go ahead and check it. A lot of times if it's something like this, two different light bulbs, no big deal, or if it was a light bulb issue, but you want to know, okay, I may have to replace this fixture. It's not hard to do, but it's going to cost you 40, 50 bucks um, to do that. And then so you'll check all of your devices where there's some form of switch. Yep, see, so that doesn't work, which is why it was already on our list of things to replace because it's not so pretty. It looks like it's from uh, 1999. <laughs> and so you want to go through the camper. That's the fans that would run off of 12 volt. You could also ask to be plugged in and you could check all of the 110 outlets. So in our case, there's one underneath the sink. There's one right here. There's one up here. Your 110 outlets are only going to work if you're plugged into shore power or if the generator is running. So while the generator is running, I could have plugged things in to show you that all of the outlets do in fact work. So that's something you're going to want to do when the generator is running or if they can plug into shore power for you. It doesn't have to be a full 30 amp connection, but then you can plug in and make sure that all of the outlets work. Again, it's something that if they don't work, if one of them doesn't work, it's probably not a big deal. If all of them don't work, it is a big deal. And so that leads to the power distribution panel. When checking electric, these are 110 fuses. None of them are tripped. The breakers are good, which means the connections are good. And I visually inspected each of these fuses for the DC fuses. You could pull them all out, check and make sure. Again, if one of them is tripped, probably not a big deal. So if you try to turn on a light and it didn't turn on, and you came and you looked and you saw, okay, this is for the bedroom lights, and the fuse was blown, ask the seller to put in a new fuse, the light should work. If they don't work, or if multiple fuses are blown, then there's probably a bigger issue. And that's something you may not be willing to uh, get into, or if you're comfortable with it, you're going to want to talk the seller down because you know you're going to have to spend money fixing it. This particular RV did not have solar power. It's not pre-wired for solar power. There's no hint of that whatsoever. So if you're looking at a used RV that has solar power, you're going to want to check all of the connections. You're going to want to understand how the solar power works. You'll have a, a controller that should be lit up. It should tell you what's coming in, what's going out, um, and the state of charge of your batteries. So you want to make sure that you have at least familiarity with the solar system if the RV that you're purchasing or if you're looking at comes with solar. In our case, ours does not have solar, so you're going to want to inspect the battery. Um, in our case, we're going to be upgrading the battery, so we just wanted to make sure we had a decent battery that ran long enough to get us to where we were going to be doing our repairs. It's very highly recommended unless you're buying from somebody who just upgraded everything that you're probably going to want to look at getting a new battery at some point in the near future as well. And we love solar power. We can't speak highly enough for Renogy products. So you may want to invest the time and energy and effort into either paying someone to install solar or installing solar on your own. But again, with this and looking at the used RV is something that we were looking to purchase. We knew that we could do that project. So there's no further investigation that we need to do. We know we're going to have to install the panels on the roof. We're going to have to run wires into the inside, and we're going to have to install our controller and our new batteries. So we knew we were getting into all of that. There's no point in brokering that into the deal. But if you're looking at a used RV that has solar and it does not function, you're going to want to negotiate that with the seller because it is going to cost money for you to repair. Anything that's going to cost you money to fix, talk down with the seller. And the last thing that you can do when you're looking at a used RV and trying to make the decision to purchase is just look for things cosmetically that 
are broken, are damaged, aren't there, uh, or are there and don't function the way that they should. So as we looked around our setup in our living room, we had carpet. Our carpet's not the prettiest. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. If there was damage from a pet, that's something you're going to notice and want to you know, be able to address. Um, we are missing a dinette, which in our case, that's okay. We were going to take the dinette out anyway and build ourselves a shelf, uh, a desk. And so that's okay that the dinette is not here. But if you walk into an RV and there's a big open space, you should know what was there or what the idea was behind uh, removing it. Yeah, and check functionality if drawers don't open. Is it something structural or is it just an easy fix? Checking blinds. Blinds go up, blinds go down. All right, yay. Drawers work for the most part. So you just want to visually inspect and make sure that everything's okay. Here's a sliding door. Does the door work? Hey, look at that. It slides and it goes back. If for some reason it was off the track, you just want to take note of that and decide whether it's a big important deal or if it's not a big deal at all. And ultimately, you want to make sure that the RV is safe. And so you should have several different alarms already installed. You should have an LP alarm for the propane in case there was a propane leak. You should have a carbon monoxide alarm in case there is carbon monoxide leak. And you should also have a smoke detector. So as we looked around this RV, we noticed this is where a smoke detector would normally be. They've even got a sticker here that says test the smoke detector. It's not here. It's not a big deal for us because before we were ever going to live out of this, we're going to install a smoke detector. The LP alarm is down here. It's got a nice green light, but I can tell you it does not work. I took a little green canister of propane. I sprayed it directly on there and it did not do anything. So I opened up the alarm and I found out it's from 1998 when this was first being manufactured. So even though there's a green light, it doesn't mean it works. Test the safety systems, test them. So when you get a smoke alarm, burn your bacon inside the camper so you know that the smoke alarm works. Same thing with propane, check, test the propane so that you know that it works. You're gonna to wanna to make sure from a safety standpoint that you have all of those alarms in place. You also want to make sure you got a, a fire extinguisher. It is not mounted right there. That's a terrible place to mount a fire extinguisher. It should be near the door. That's great. We found ours here under the sink, which is another fantastic place. And I said, wow, this looks fantastic. It looks great. But if you look underneath the fire extinguisher on the bottom, this is a standard place for dates, 2018. That's not terrible because that's not 2013 when this RV stopped being used extensively. And it's not 1999, but it is later than we feel comfortable with. So we're gonna make sure that we have two other fire extinguishers with us because this is a big space. We're gonna have one in our living, uh, in our kitchen area and living room. We're also gonna keep one in the bedroom as well. You do wanna make sure that the RV is safe. These are things with the safety that we can do after the fact because we aren't living in it right away. But do know that safety should be a top priority when you're inspecting the used RV. When you're shopping for a used RV, you should really feel comfortable knowing that everything gets put together, everything falls apart. You can figure out how to fix things if you need to, but you wanna be aware of what works and what doesn't work. So anything that's broken can be fixed. It's whether you wanna fix it, whether you wanna ask the seller to fix it, or whether you want to negotiate with the seller for a better price so that you can budget that into fixing. In our case, we talked down a couple different little things that we knew were going to need to be fixed and we settled on what was fair, having done a thorough inspection of the RV. 
Are you going to be surprised about things that break or are broken that you didn't think to check? Possibly. So one thing you're going to want to do when you're looking for your used RV is determine, one, what your budget is, and two, what the criteria are that you're looking for in the RV. Does it have to be a new RV? If so, the dealer is going to have a whole different run through for you to check out. If it's used, you're going to want to use this as a reference point, but also do some more homework on the particular type of RV that you're purchasing. For instance, we wanted to make sure that we had the Ford V10 engine, so that limited most of the other RVs that weren't Ford, all the other ones that weren't Ford V10, we didn't even bother to look at. So if you know the make and model, that will give you a head start for what you're looking for. The year didn't concern us so much. Um, the fact that it had low mileage was important to us as well. So you want to go through the factors that are important for you in making your personal buying decision. A high mileage RV may be an issue from a mechanical standpoint because you've got to have the background and know what's been done to the engine, what about the transmission. These are carrying a lot of weight, so there's a lot of strain. If it's a high mileage RV, the chances of a mechanical issue being present are higher than in our case with 47,000 miles. But in our case, with our RV not being used that often, there's a lot that needs to be done. We know we're gonna to need to fix some of the seams on the roof so that we ensure that there's no future water damage. We know that we had a couple appliances we need to fix, our refrigerator, possibly the hot water heater. We know that there's a couple small leaks when it comes to the faucets in the kitchen and the bathroom. So we know what we're up against. We're happy with our purchase decision because we feel comfortable knowing that we've thoroughly inspected this RV from top to bottom. You should take your time and feel comfortable with your inspection. If you feel pushed or if you ask a question for the seller and they refuse to answer or they don't know, just know that that should be part of your decision whether to purchase or not. Hopefully this video has helped you feel comfortable as you're walking into an inspection for a used RV. We're going to provide some resources in the description below that you can click on for checklists and other items that you want to take with you when you're inspecting the possible purchase of a used RV. If you appreciate this video, please make sure to like it. Leave us a comment or any questions that you may have. And please go ahead and subscribe to our channel as we take you on the journey of remodeling this old RV and taking it on the road for the next two, three, four, five, fifteen 15 years. Thanks for watching this video. Look forward to checking in with you later.